This is John the Baptist. Welcome, John. Thank, Thank you for coming. Back then. What did you say? Uh, welcome, John. Thank you for coming. It is my pleasure. It was the name that I was given, but of course it wasn't my real name. But what was your, what was your real name? name? What was your real name? John Antonock. But they called me John the Baptist. I'm sure John is an English pronunciation and, and uh, yes. And Ju Judea and Israel, it would be something very different. Yes, it would. And so it was a different, different name altogether, but I understand it. Something like Ian or Jan or In, something of that sort. Yeah, um, so my question is, uh, we heard that uh, the main uh, players of that drama are coming back and incarnating. And because you were first th then, maybe you're coming back again now, and, um, and maybe you know the whole story, what's, what's happening. I know much of what's happening. I will be coming back also, but in a different capacity than I did before. Jesus does not need baptized again. He was baptized when he was here the first time. So he is already baptized, so I will not have to do it again. The thing is, someone else will be bringing him forth. Um, I will be here to uh, help to praise him and bring him into the light, but there will be others more uh, prominent than myself that will be bringing him there because it's been prophesied that Moses and Elijah would bring him, uh, will be here and be much more prominent this time. So I, I assume you're doing it on many other planets, are you? We do it on other planets because this is something that God wants done to bring understanding to spirituality. Now, it always gets messed up in some way or another, but then that's why the second coming is all about. It's about straightening out all the things that got messed up in, while... Uh, in the in-between time, should we say. Uh, can you tell me uh, how it works on other planets? Can you tell me the, the, the myths and legends of other planets? How, how you did it on, in other places? It's very similar, but not the same in all places. Some people don't need him to die for the, the message to get through they realize that eternal life is being represented and he can do the, his miracles and they can ex accept him for who he is without a resurrection or without a death. So can you, give, other, can you give me a specific example, like a planet and the story of how you played it? No, what was your best case scenario or what, what was your favorite scenario? Well, in, in the Andromeda, where... Uh, there are many very difficult uh, understandings of spirituality because in Andromeda is where a lot of the reptilians and a lot of insectoids are and a lot of non-humanoid species. And, but they still need to understand salvation or what uh, God can do for them. And uh -huh. some of them are very resistant to that. But I... In a couple of scenarios there, especially the Elias Sean Dizendi, uh -huh. very accepting. Jesus came there as a reptilian, uh -huh. and he was not called Jesus, of course. There uh -huh. were other names, but was able to teach the people about kindness and goodness and healing and love, and and um, <clears throat> it caught on much easier with that particular species than uh -huh. it did with any of, any of the other ones in that area. So it was a very big success. 
with the LAS Sean Dai Zendi. But of course, the belief system was that you that God was the main source of understanding. You didn't need to go have an intercessor to be able to find salvation, but that God was the salvation and and Jesus was showing how God was uh, the creator and all these things. So it was the best case scenario through the Andromeda area. And what was your role? My role was similar. I baptized him. I baptized him in, when he first shows in all these scenarios. Uh, what was uh, Mary Magdalene's role? Oh, one moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Mary Magdalene was always there to take care of him, to comfort him during his normal life. Uh huh. He, she was. She is always the one that is there to bring uh, more normality and more. Uh, uh, comfort to him during his lifetime. Was was she female too? Yes, she was. And his mother was his mother again. Yeah, his mother was there. They were all reptilians. Whenever uh -huh. you go to a world where there's reptilians, you are a reptilian. So his mother was a reptilian. Yes, and she was the same because she is the same on on most scenarios. Wow. And, uh, and Judas? It was not necessary to have a Judas on every one of these scenarios. Uh -huh. um, the planet Earth was a very different place. It had a more in-depth story than some of the other ones. Not that it was less interesting, but it had more facets. And was a little harder to carry off so that the human species would understand all the things that were happening. There were so many kinds of deceit and so many kinds of uh, misunderstandings that many of those had to be dealt with uh, on Earth and not uh, dealt with as much in other places because there wasn't so much negative diversity but here there was a great deal of it um, what's the role of lucifer in, in the development of christianity he was the balance he was uh -huh. to actually lucifer was added to frighten people into acceptance uh -huh. to make uh -huh. them think that if they did not accept god then they would be uh, sent somewhere bad, but that you see that wasn't part of our That wasn't part of our plan that somebody else brought that in I'm uh, Looking at uh, learning about Gnostics and Valentinians and apparently our branch of Christianity that became popular uh, uh, One of the harshest ones uh, it uh, yes, it is discarded the reincarnation and it made it uh, made people very much materialistic. I mean, although it was a, a, a mystical religion, it made it people like very um, uh, isolated and, um, and angry. Well, the thing is that the incarnation is still there in thought process, but they don't understand it completely. They just look at it as something, they don't look at it as, as mystical anymore. It becomes just a matter of fact. They heard it so many times. It's become over, overplayed, and they don't believe that it's mystical anymore. It's it just seems very. Uh, it just seems like one of the facts, and that is something that will be brought back with the incarnation. Is that he? It is a beautiful and amazing thing which God has done and that God will continue to do. But you see, people are taking things for, for granted these days. 
And that's why you need a second coming. You need a refresher. You need them to see for a first hand what can be done and what will be done. Uh, so it is all tied to, to ascension, right? It is. Uh, so is it uh, typical on other planets that um, Christianity becomes a major uh, belief system? It's not Christianity on all planets. It's something different. But it is the major, the uh, basic idea of it is the same, yes. But it's not, it, it, did, it doesn't always turn out the same way on every planet. So in our history, there was um, a period of, uh, there was lots of other religions, like Mayan religion, Chinese religion, um, uh, lots of Aboriginal religions, and by some reason, Christianity took over and became uh, uh, very dominant. Uh, but uh, I mean, my question is, initially, it looks like there is um, a very harsh society with uh, human sacrifices and, and fight, and then uh, Krishna and Jesus and few others come, come and uh, teach people love and uh, ideas of uh, heart chakra. So, so in in our place, um, Je Jesus was the main one. But in other places, is it also Jesus that I think it's a miracle that Christianity became the major one because there were so many competitive things. Is it always oh, yeah. on other planets that uh, Jesus and and you guys uh, bring the major well, in religion? The, the reason why Christianity became so popular is because there was a lot of zealots about uh, over, uh, they, they claimed to have uh, a Christian experience that was different than anything else that, was, that anybody would record. And this experience changed them and made them different. The, the fact that many people after accepting Christianity changed so drastically made it very interesting to the rest of the world. Now, the ones that changed drastically are the ones that affected the change uh, for Christianity as a whole because they saw that this had some energy or power over these people and that uh, the change did come to these humans, and so they were able to accept it more easily. All right. I mean, it was a Constantine that made it uh, into a religion of the empire, but it was quite possible that a Roman, a Roman religion would be just fine and Zeus would be still the main god instead of uh, uh, Christianity, whatever is in Christianity. Yes. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, I think, uh, I suspect there was um, a lot of um, uh, divine interference and help to make it happen. So, I mean, because it was a miracle here, it was very unlikely, but happened. So, w is it also, is Christianity also helped on other planets to, to become a main religion? Of course. But... It doesn't always become the main religion of other planets. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, Jesus returns, Jesus can go and be more like a Krishna in some places and more mm -hmm. like a Buddha on other places, depending mm -hmm. on what's needed for the culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just noticed there was another group of uh, people who incarnate together. Uh, this were like Yogananda uh, yes. and his teachers. Yes. And um, they also were bringing um, uh, so, some sort of a very profound message and profound idea of enlightenment. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, because what it is is this. Humanity, certain parts of humanity have certain perceptions now, the universe sees what these perceptions are and sends the right kind of entities to be, be uh, a focal point for these perceptions. And so the people can actually understand God better 
through these people than they would through, say, another deity. So that is why there are many deities on your planet, is because they are, are different perceptions of the same God. But they are, they are there to help people to relate to how they feel more easily. Like Buddha, he is, he is kind, wonderful, beautiful. People can relate to that, but he does not have a salvation plan. And a lot of people do not aspire to a salvation plan, but believe that he is someone of notoriety and would follow him over Christianity. So they both exist because there are different ways of thinking about God. I think Buddha has a, a beautiful salvation plan. Oh, enlightenment, enlightenment of Buddha is not very different from enlightenment from, from Jesus. It They're is very similar. in some ways. Yes, there, but the thing is, it's a different aspect of thought. The way that you get to where you need to go it is still the same in many respects, but in other ways, it's a little softer. So actually, Buddhism helps. Uh, uh, Buddhism allows the countries to sustain much higher population. Like Buddhism in India allows to for a billion of people to live there. And I mean, not exactly Buddhism, but Buddhism plus Hinduism plus whatever yes, it is. Yes, the Hindu, Hinduism is the big one in India. Right. But what I'm saying, um, Christianity makes people more, more individualistic. Uh, they are less, they're less compatible. Less what? Less compatible, uh, more angry, less, more fight, fighting, fighting more. Yes. They... So I'm, th I'm thinking maybe it's... Um, is it because it was messed up, or is it uh, intentional that we needed to learn some, some lessons on the level of, of uh, Sol Chakra and War? Well, there are several things that cause that. Um, the people that are adamant for Jesus or for the Christianity are taught that they must be that way. This is how it's brought through in the teachings, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you can't, if you go against that, it's, you, it's a big sin. So they fight for the truth that they believe in because it's so hard put. Mm -hmm. So the other religions of the world, like I said, are a little softer, not Mohammedism, that one is not, but some of the other ones are a little softer in getting to the point of love and kindness and understanding, but there are others that are harsher as well. So Islam um, is harsh. Did, you, you, did your group of uh, beings uh, help to create Islam? We created, we helped. The, Islam was never supposed to be a religion. But it turned out to be one because they uh, followed Muhammad. And Muhammad was just a prophet. He was not a god. And he was not, a, he was a spiritual leader. But he was not to be worshipped as they do now. And he, it was not to bring about a new religion that we brought him there. But to change people's attitude about how, uh, how, a regular human could see God because the angel did come to him in the caves after he had been praying for a while and he was frightened and ran away. So you know he wasn't a God. But uh, the thing is, it caught on that it was very, very much like Christianity in the sense that uh, the same rules applied, the same strictness and adherence was necessary. You cannot disobey in uh, Islam or else you're, you're badly punished. So, uh, with, uh, so it is actually as, as harsh as Christianity in many senses. Uh, 
it was Gabriel who gave the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the information, the the teaching to Muhammad. I think he also gave it to uh, to many others and also to Mormons, right? Yes, of course. It wasn't Gabriel that gave it to the Mormons. Oh no, that was the angel Moroni. Oh, I see. Moroni was the one that gave it to the Mormons. But the thing is, there's many questions about that religion and many questions if it was actually, actually happened the way it said it was, but uh, too many questions on that one. But the idea to run away from the, from the waters to, the, to some high, high location, I think it's a great idea. Yes, of course. And they're waiting for different disasters and are prepared. I think it's one of the most prepared parts of the world. Yes, I think you're right. And also they believe in aliens. It was also very advanced. Yes, actually, they are advanced in some ways. In some ways, they are not. But uh -huh. yes, I, it is not I'm putting them down at all. That uh -huh. There was many positive things about the Mormons, except they're the basis of their religion, some of the facts are not quite right. So have you personally participated like as a soul in um, any other later um, events? I didn't get the question. What did you say? So since the time when you lived there and, and baptized the Jesus, uh, baptized Jesus, uh, after that, did you come and help with any other of those events? Like did you come to help Mormons or Muslims or any others? I did help with some things, but I, not in the same capacity. Mm -hmm. But just to be a help spiritually to some of them. Uh -huh. And that is what I did. So, you would not know, I, I was there in spirit and not in person. Oh, I see. So what's the plan now? What, what is the, uh, you know, in our lifetime, what is the plan? What do we need to achieve? What's the uh, purpose? What is the purpose of uh, So for the, next, for the next 50 years, what um, dimensional spiritual transformations are expected? What do we need to achieve? What are the options? That's not for me to say, really. Oh, wow. Uh, we have you have a lot of options in the meantime mm -hmm. so but i cannot tell you what they are but right. you, uh, the thing is this this is a time when jesus is going to return very shortly okay there will be elijah that brings him back will start his ministry which has already started okay. and jesus is already alive and in, in a body Mm -hmm. He's only 21, so he is not ready yet for his mission to start. Okay. But he is different than you will, uh, different than the last Jesus by quite a bit. He will not seem the same at all, but you will know him by his love, his, uh -huh. his understanding, his goodness, his kindness, the miracles that he shows. But he will come from a very different place. He will not come from the Middle East this time. That's all right. No, yes, it is. But, and um, it, it will be, you will see what I mean when you discover, when he uh, comes on the scene, as it were. Uh -huh. There are some people that know who he is already. Oh, wow. Yeah, in his lifetime, there were only a small uh, number of people who knew him. And his main uh, effect was happening much later when it became a legend. Yes. So would, would he do the same or is it expected in his lifetime for the effect to happen? Uh, it will be in his lifetime, this will happen, that people will recognize him as, as returned. But there will be something, uh, there will be a, some disasters before that. Oh, gosh. Okay, that's interesting. There so there is, no, 
there is no 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 uh, reason to prepare. Should you be, be preparing for disasters or just ignore that? No, there's no way to prepare for this kind of disaster. There's no way. Yeah, this morning I woke up from a nightmare. Uh, there was a disaster coming, and I couldn't find my glasses. And you couldn't find your glasses? Yeah, I was trying to find my glasses and to put on the pants, and there was no belt on the pants, so so I was not ready for the disaster. Ah, oh, yes, there is things coming that people are just, they will not expect. All right. So, uh, so in like 40 years ago, or 50, yeah, 40 years ago, there were like very influential, uh, few people were very influential in terms of being popular and respected and, um, uh, I forgot the name, but uh, there was a gentleman who stopped the Vietnam War just by, by his, uh, uh, he was a television host. And um, he was just uh, able to stop Vietnam War by, by just by, by his authority, by talking to people. And John Lennon was very influential. But now it's so much more shallow. I mean, there are few, lots of, lots of, lots of popular people. And uh, I, there are very few who actually are capable of changing the world by, by speaking because there is so much noise. That is true. There's too many voices in the world today. And that's mm -hmm. another reason why Jesus must return, to, to bring a unification of the correct voices. I like the Dalai Lama. Um, some people respect him. Um, what do you think about Elon Musk? Elon Musk? Um, I like him, of course. Uh -huh. but he looks like an alien. He looks like an alien. He behaves like an there alien. There are several aliens that are down there. And Ian is probably very, is a hybrid for sure. Uh-huh. So, yes. There are many uh, beautiful alien hybrids on your planet at this time. So, and you will see them and know them. So, it is definitely true. So, he is not part of your team? Not really part of that team, no. But uh -huh. he is part of what exists as information and what exists as enlightenment. At some point he was about to die, but then miraculously survived even disease was misdiagnosed. So was there, were the angels involved in that? Of course. Uh, does he have an angelic part of the soul or something? There is not an angelic part to his soul. But he is, uh, he is there for a purpose, and his purpose was not yet fulfilled completely, so he had to stay. Of course. Um, he seems to be knowing what he is doing really well. It doesn't come just from uh, being talented. It, it looks like he has a lot of experience with humans. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, was he, what, can you disclose his past incarnation? What was he, where did he get his experience? Oh, he got his experience many times for being in, uh, he was in India many times uh -huh. and followed the, the teachings that were there at that, at that time uh, very closely. And he was also in uh, the Orient and mm -hmm. followed the teachings there as well. So he has a lot of uh, experience talking and living uh, as a monk and as a, uh, what do they call shaman and also many other things that are uh, as priests, but not in the uh, Catholic church or anything of that nature, not in Christianity, but in the more gentler uh, perspectives. I, um, uh... The, I googled the mask, uh, Elon Musk reincarnation or incarnation, and there are pictures of his face next to Ed, uh, Thomas Edison's face. And of course, we don't like Thomas Edison because he was uh, treating Tesla badly. 
Uh, and also I looked at the, his features and they're not very similar. Only eyes are similar and the other features are barely similar. So my question is, what is the, was he, is he an incarnation of Edison? No. He really is not. He, but he, uh, he is an incarnation of Franklin. Franklin. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin. Ah. Wow. Thank you. That's an interesting research. I will, I will check it out. I would need to listen to their biographies side by side. I'm now listening to Musk biography. Well, he, he, go ahead. Their lives are different, but they're, you'll see there's a thread of similarity there. Wow. Yeah, I see that he was, uh, he didn't change much. He was, uh, even when he was, I think, 17, he was already behaving pretty much like he's behaving now. He was very, um, you know, all the success traits were there. Yes, exactly. And, but Franklin was a, an inventor. Uh-huh. Uh, but he has also an inventive mind. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you'll see some parallels there. They don't look alike, I don't think. I heard about Francis Inventions, but I didn't research it. I should. Thank you. Uh, what time is now? Let me see. I have another 34 minutes. Uh, I would invite you to do some closing speech, give us a blessing, and maybe invite um, uh, Mary Magdalene, Francis Creek, or Rosalind Franklin. I uh, have questions to any of them. Very well. Let me do a prayer for you at the end. Thank you. Thank you. May God richly bless you and pour his spirit down upon you. For when you feel the spirit of God, you know that you've been blessed. Let him empower you and move you forward in the ways that he would have you go. Let him give you the knowledge of the universe that is necessary for you to have in this lifetime. Let him create within you a greater purpose than you've ever had before and a greater fire for it than you've ever had. And let him know, know how much you love him so that he can pour that love back down upon you a hundredfold. You see, for what you give to God, he definitely gives back to you a hundredfold. Let him also be your guide. Let him be a light that walks with you. And if you have troubles, let him carry you and put your faith in him to know that he is doing his best to bring you through the darkness. For he is not a creator of darkness, but he is one that brings you through it. He is one that brightens the day. He is one that makes the darkness less. Now we ask in his name that you be the greatest man you can possibly be and know yourself as well as you can possibly know. Be honest about all things and be not uncomfortable with the love and guidance that he gives. Know yourself and know God is with you, for he loves you and wants you to be protected and guided. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. And let me see who is there to be brought through. Thank you. <laughs>